Plankton. Plankton, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you bring it up? I can't risk stepping into the light. The whale might see me. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most awful, horrendously disgusting, or offensively lazy episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants. If you want someone demolished, I guess you have to demolish them yourself. Number 20, Atlantis Squarepantis. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Lord Royal Highness, but my friends call me LRH. Look, we can enjoy Atlantis Squarepantis in concept. It was interesting to see how the mythical underwater city fits into the show's lore. Unfortunately, it pales in comparison to any of the episodes that came before it. Just about every song is forgettable, with the exception of Goodbye Atlantis. Goodbye Atlantis, we're bikini bottom bound. Please turn this bus around. And the Willy Wonka-esque storyline feels hastily cobbled together, with absolutely no payoff in the end. Yes, it's not as awful as the other 19 episodes we have yet to reveal, but after specials like SpongeBob's House Party or the Lost Episode, this should have been better. I thought sponges were supposed to make life easier. Number 19, SpongeBob, you're fired. What would happen if SpongeBob was fired? Who cares? Did this really need to be explored? Hey, Mr. Krabs, what's the good word? Well, actually, SpongeBob, uh, there's two words, and they're not very good. You're fired. SpongeBob You're Fired quickly proves how ridiculous it is the second Mr. Krabs explains he fired his best fry cook just to save a nickel. What follows is 20 minutes of our poorest pal living the most miserable days of his life. Hey Gary, I'm home. Forever. <laughs> Not only are we subjected to mundane gags, we also get to witness what happens when the Krusty Krab doesn't have SpongeBob around for the hundredth time. I should have never let you go. The Krusty Krab is falling apart without you. You're rehired, boy. All right! Didn't we already see about a dozen other episodes do something similar? Really, what was the point of the predictable plot? Number 18, waiting. Where's my prize? Free prize? <gasps> Inside. Waiting for waiting to have a payoff is an exercise in futility. It just wasn't in the cards. Waiting sees SpongeBob cash in on a cereal box prize, only to spend an exorbitant amount of time standing by his mailbox. It is quite literally an episode where nothing happens outside of watching him be mean to his friends and even miss his own birthday. Yeah! Hey, SpongeBob! Wanna do some karate? Not now, I'm busy. Overall, we just fail to believe that this is something SpongeBob would actually do. Yes, waiting for a cereal box prize is stupid, but this is something Patrick would do. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then he came, and then we're waiting, we're waiting, and then my dog, and then you, and then stop, and then me. Past episodes have shown the amazing Mr. Absorbency has more brains than what we saw here. Number 17, To Love a Patty. What even was this? In To Love a Patty, SpongeBob cooks up a Krabby Patty so beautiful, so stunning, so perfect, that he winds up starting a relationship with it. Oh, Patty, when we're together, I feel like we're in our own little world. Like, like nothing can hurt us. Fire! <laughs> yes, the powers that be thought, wow, let's do this. Let's have SpongeBob fall in love with food, sing an awful love song to food, and show the food getting soggy, moldy, and gross throughout the episode. Oh, Patty, do you realize what this signifies? <laughs> That's right. It's our six-hour anniversary. Because it isn't enough for him to simply enjoy cooking food. Needless to say, if there was ever a moment SpongeBob truly jumped the shark, it was this episode. Maybe you can't see Patty's beauty, but to me, she's the most gorgeous creature in the sea. Well, I definitely see I can't help the mentally atrophied. Goodbye, creature. Number 16, Squid's Visit. In Squid's Visit, SpongeBob sets out to make his home look just like Squidward's place, just to convince him to visit. Now, SpongeBob has been many things. Naive, goofy, innocent, silly, a bit weird in some cases, but borderline psychotic? You won't even recognize the place, Squidward. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> <sighs> For some reason, that is the only character trait he exhibits here. The episode as a whole is a creepy bore from start to finish. None of the gags are funny, and most of it is spent painting SpongeBob as a total creep. <sighs> oh, what a horrible nightmare. So, 
Well, are you enjoying your stay at Chez Sponge? Even worse is that nothing is truly resolved at the end. Squidward's house burns down, and he winds up staying at SpongeBob's until his home is rebuilt. Aw, don't worry, Squidward. You're more than welcome to stay at my house until you get your house fixed. Number 15, Truth or Square. How fun would it be to spend a whole TV special exploring what-if moments? Not very. Friends, we have gathered here today to join these two hearts in the bonds of love. Truth or Square was a monumental waste of time and an awful way to celebrate the show's 10th anniversary. While the patchy segments with celebrity cameos were entertaining, watching SpongeBob and friends reminisce and fantasize while being stuck in the Krusty Krab's air vents was not. Squidward? What's with the creepy smile? I was just uh, remembering the world before SpongeBob. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Did we really need to see SpongeBob eating his first Krabby Patty? What about the day he moved to Bikini Bottom? Or the day he and Sandy got married? It all felt like unnecessary throwaway gags based on episodes that were never made. Plankton! He'll never get me formula. Not even in a flashback. I, 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 <laughs> Number 14, Rodeo Days. If there was ever an episode that served as a perfect example of budget production, it was Rodeo Days. When Sandy goes to a rodeo, SpongeBob, Patrick, and the rest of Bikini Bottom perceive it as a dangerous act and head to Texas to rescue her. Where the devil are we? It's Texas. <laughs> For the rest of the episode, we get cheap animation one would expect from a show like South Park. The difference between the two is that South Park plays it up for laughs. For SpongeBob, the joke wears thin after a couple of seconds. You see, Slickers made me lose the rodeo. Why are you here anyways? To help save you from this rodeo thing. I don't need to be saved. We would have been fine if the whole episode was just dedicated to Sandy and had real animation behind it rather than just PNGs. Number 13, Choir Boys. La 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 in Choir Boys, SpongeBob annoys Squidward while the cephalopod is on his way to the Bikini Bottom men's choir performance. Not only does he annoy his neighbor, SpongeBob manages to annoy even the viewers. Ah, uh, singing traffic! Oh, so love there is so much awful singing in this episode, which we would expect from Squidward. SpongeBob, though, come on! Overall, Choir Boys isn't the most memorable episode, as most of the gags eat up so much time that they leave no room for any interesting plot development. If you want a musical episode, just go watch Band Geeks. Number 12, Someone's in the Kitchen with Sandy. Among the few instances where Plankton and Sandy have interacted with each other, this was the most disturbing and disgusting of the bunch. This episode shows Plankton turn Sandy's fur suit into a walking, talking husk as part of his plot to steal an elusive secret formula. Watch where you're standing, Coral Brains. Sandy? You don't look so good. Hey, you gotta stop eating at the chum bucket. That stuff will rot your insides. Lies! Lies! Sheldon J. Plankton has committed a plethora of awful crimes, but stealing the skin fur of another animal? It's one of the most heinous and disturbing things we've seen in the show. Sammy! What? Nothing! Remember, never over dry. Otherwise, the seaweed becomes brittle and cracks. Plus, Plankton is supposed to be a genius. There was certainly a more imaginative and less haunting plan he could have gone with. It's finally mine! <laughs> Time to kick this baby in a four-claw drive! Wait, Sandy! We can work this out! Number 11, Demolition Doofus. Mrs. Puff has long been known to have a strong resentment towards SpongeBob, but is it so strong as to want to actually kill him? What is wrong with you guys? Squash the squish! Yes! Apparently so, and it's why Demolition Doofus is among the most notorious episodes. After suffering from an accident, caused by another one of SpongeBob's failed driving tests, Mrs. Puff tricks him into entering into a demolition derby, enticed by the thought of his possible death. Risking their lives for our amusement? I could finally be rid of SpongeBob. 
Couple this mischaracterization of Mrs. Puff with a meandering story and unfunny gags, and Demolition Derby quickly shows why it's another stain on the show's once spotless reputation. Now everything's back to normal! Yes, perfectly normal. Number 10, Boating Buddies. SpongeBob, I've been sitting here motionless for 45 minutes. What could you possibly have heard me doing? Breathing. Watching Squibber take L after L can be entertaining, but when that's all the episode is, it can get stale. We'll admit that Boating Buddies has a few decent laughs, but for the most part, it's bizarre. Squidward, sit here. Yeah. Um, excuse me, there don't seem to be any empty seats left. But there's one right next to SpongeBob. <laughs> From SpongeBob's chalkboard message to the driving test that involves a shrink ray experiment, many moments feel super out of place. You said you didn't need my help, Squidward, and that you didn't need me. No, no, I didn't. I, I never said that. <laughs> I don't need your help, and I don't need you, jerk. Don't get us wrong, we enjoy the occasional absurdity SpongeBob dives into, but there still has to be some level of setup, some ounce of logic that makes sense within the world. At least Mrs. Puff was much more level-headed here. I didn't get a chance to fill in a single answer. What am I supposed to do? You do the same thing that everybody else does who fails the test. You take it again next week. Number nine, Pet Sitter Pat. I need you to take care of Gary. Are you going off the grid? What? Don't worry, I know what to do. You're gonna need one of these. No, that's not it. Past episodes have shown that Patrick does hold some affection for his best friend's pet. Well, for some reason, episodes like Dumped have been completely forgotten so that Pet Sitter Pat may live. No! Oh, hey, Fred, what's up? Here, we see what Patrick is like as a pet sitter, and he becomes the meanest and coldest character of the show. He disregards SpongeBob's schedule for Gary, goes hours without feeding or walking Gary, eats Gary's food in front of him, pours his food into the kitchen sink, and even destroys SpongeBob's house. If you wanted another bath, why didn't you just ask? We know Patrick is dumb, but to consistently put Gary in danger and ignore SpongeBob's schedule makes him an absolute menace. Number eight, Big Sister Sam. Before his negligence towards Gary, Patrick treated his own neighbors poorly when his sister visited in this episode. For the entire 11 minutes, Patrick and Sam get into a fight with Squidward as they deliberately destroy his house to make a brand new rock. My house is full of sand! If Big Nose no like sand, Big Nose move! This only antagonizes Squidward more as he tries to exact revenge. What's worse is that Patrick actively defends his sister, even when she's clearly hurting people. Now, don't you think, Patrick, that it's a teensy bit unfair that Sister Sam dismantled Squidward's house? No, I don't. Not even a teensy, eensy, teensy bit. And what do we get for enduring such a horrible episode that brought out the worst in its main cast? A lovely close-up of Sam's two fingernails. Sister Sam must go. Blake for manicure. How pleasant. Number seven, Ink Lemonade. Mildred, you've met Squidward. <laughs> Many of the episodes from seasons 11 and 12 are pretty top-notch, but Ink Lemonade probably steered more fans away just as they were returning. When Patrick finds success selling Squidward's ink as lemonade, he does everything he can to scare Squidward into sneezing fits. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> For almost the whole episode, viewers are subjected to mean-spirited behavior and some of the most grotesque imagery the show has ever seen. It certainly doesn't help that the animation is obnoxiously exaggerated in almost every frame, like a hyperactive YouTube cartoon. May I help you, young man? <laughs> How was this greenlit during the writing process? Number six. Face freeze. Okay, so what do you get when you mix in the myth of getting your face frozen with the body horror of I Was a Teenage Gary and the insubordinate attitudes in Hookie? You get 
face freeze. Do you mind? Mind what? Making faces? Of course we don't. <laughs> you got that right now. What a silly question. <laughs> After making a series of disturbing and disfigured faces, SpongeBob and Patrick find their faces stuck to their ridiculous forms. It's not even the faces that are a problem in this episode, but the imagery around it. You seem to be carrying a lot of stress in your eyeballs. <laughs> Them shoulders look way out of line. From SpongeBob's drool to the overly detailed close-ups, Face Freeze is far from what we wanted from the show. Was this made by the team at Nickelodeon or some troll fic writers? <laughs> it's not funny. Stop laughing. Number five, stuck in the ringer. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to actually despise SpongeBob, this episode will let you find out. Our bubbly buddy has found himself in an unfortunate predicament where he cannot get out of his ringer. Oh yeah, I saw ya. Not gonna fool me this time, so... Patrick tries to help his friend feel better, but it only results in public humiliation for the dim-witted starfish. SpongeBob's nasty behavior aside, Stuck in the Ringer also feels like an excuse to show audiences that two best friends can get into heated arguments. I have never felt so ashamed. What do you mean? If it wasn't for your forever glue, I wouldn't be stuck in this thing! I was only trying to help. Help! I think you've helped quite enough today! Problem is, that this was not the story nor the tone to convey that particular life lesson, especially when the conclusion is so rushed and lacks any nuance. Oh, man! I guess crying does solve your problems after all. Come here, buddy. Well, at least we're together. <laughs> Should I get the glue? Number four, House Fancy. Hello, and welcome one and all to a super special episode of House Fancy. I'm your host, Nicholas Withers. The idea of Squidward indulging in interior decorating makes sense for his character. It's what makes House Fancy interesting, initially. It's after the call to his favorite TV show, where it all takes a nosedive. Ham-fisting SpongeBob into the plot is nowhere near as offensive as the scene where Squidward has to move the couch. Now don't move it till I say, Ow! Okay, it's on my foot, now don't Ow! Okay! SpongeBob! Yeah, the image of Squiddy getting his toenail mangled and ripped off was grueling to watch. We have seen grotesque body horror in previous episodes, but this moment felt incredibly forced, like the show was trying to capitalize on shock value. By the end of it, we felt the same as Squidward's toilet. Please, please, somebody put me out of my misery! <laughs> have mercy on my soul! Number three, the splinter. Hey, a splinter! Okay, well, it's been nice knowing you, but you have got to go now. Okay, ah, we go. This was about as pleasant to endure as a real splinter. When a workplace accident occurs and SpongeBob gets a splinter, he does everything he can to get rid of it before potentially being sent home. You're making this a little bit difficult. Luckily, I am ambidextrous! <laughs> At first, the sight of it is nothing to get squeamish about, but it quickly escalates after SpongeBob visits the brilliant Dr. Patrick. Splinters are already disgusting to look at. Do we really have to look at one that is foaming up and eventually bursts all over Mr. Krabs? Problem <laughs> Whew! For a second there, I thought I was gonna have to pay a workman's compensation! The answer is a resounding, absolutely not and the splinter became widely regarded as the start of the show's low point. Number two, a pal for Gary. Did someone at Nickelodeon harbor a deep hatred for Gary? Because a pal for Gary was torture for us. In this poor excuse of an episode, SpongeBob adopts another pet thinking it might keep Gary company while he's off doing other things. I'll take that one right there. You wish to obtain one of my rare and extremely dangerous... Huh? Oh yeah, this is the one! What follows is a series of events where Gary is being threatened by the new pet, before Spongebob comes in completely oblivious to his best friend staring into the face of death. Gary! Ah! You put Fluffy down right now! Bad boy Gary! Bad! Bad! Bad boy! Bad! We have to wonder who thought kids would want to watch something like this, and it's one of the two reasons why season 7 gets so much vitriol. Bobby, wait! Well, Gary, what do you have to say for yourself? The other reason? Well, it's our final entry. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. 
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. One Course Meal No need to get worked up over this, Krabs. Just give me the secret formula and I'll be on my way. You ain't getting it. I implore you to reconsider. This is, by far, the worst SpongeBob episode to ever exist. And it is hard to argue that any other episode reaches such an abysmally low level of quality as this. One Course Meal is widely hated by SpongeBob fans young and old, and rightfully so. First off, you have Mr. Krabs gleefully tormenting Plyton by exploiting his fear of whales with no remorse whatsoever. I want Plankton meat! Holy protozoa! Karen! She's here! She got in! Then, you have the depressing and heartbreaking moment where Plankton waits for a bus to crush him so he can stop living in paranoia. It is all tasteless and totally dismissive of some of the heavy subject matter it briefly touches upon. Good luck finding a soul who found one course meal to be remotely tolerable. Hey Plankton, if I were you, I wouldn't be so smug. Why not? Because a hungry pot of whales just showed up for its early feeding. <laughs> Get me out of here! What do you think was the worst episode of SpongeBob? Did it make our list? Let us know down in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to Watch Mojo for more great videos every day. Da -da. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.